Okay, this is the last section in our first unit for week one. So this is 5.2, matrix solution of linear systems. Now, we're assuming that you have seen systems of equations um, either when you took intermediate algebra or when you took um, elementary algebra or if you've taken a co-requisite course before. Um, so you should have seen something about systems of equations beforehand. This is just going to be another method to solving a system of equations, okay? Um, so one of the things that we do is we turn a system of equations into what's called an augmented matrix. Once you have that matrix form of the system, then you can do certain things to that matrix. So these are the three things that you can do to any matrix. You can interchange any two rows. You could multiply. It says or divide, but really, if you want to divide by two, that's the same thing as multiplying by one half. And normally when we're doing matrices, we're doing this kind of operation versus that kind of operation. But you are allowed to multiply or divide um, the elements of any row by a non-zero real number. Now, or for instance, if I wanted to divide by three-fifths, all I have to do is multiply by the reciprocal, which is five-thirds. So those are one and the same things, okay? And we actually already know from fractions that you never actually really divide. You always end up multiplying by the reciprocal anyway. So it's the same thing when it comes to the matrix operations. The last one's a little bit more confusing. It says replace any row with the sum of the elements of that row and the multiple of another row, okay? So what this means is if I multiply two times row one and I add row two, which row can I replace with the answer? I have to replace the one that doesn't have the multiple, okay? And if you're doing row one plus row two without putting any multiples, then you have a choice. It could be row one or row two, but you're going to have a goal in mind. So you're going to know which row it is that you're going to want to replace. Okay. So here we have the the Gauss Jardin method is literally you're going to have an augmented matrix with a bunch of numbers in here and it's going to look something like this and we'll show you how to get this in a little bit and what you want to do is you want to turn this into one zero zero one which is called the diagonal matrix because it has a diagonals of one and everything else would be zeros and then you're going to end up with um, some value over here and some value down there. And essentially that means that X equals G and Y equals H, and then therefore you've solved the matrix. So these are a consequence of trying to get this stuff into the diagonal form, okay? And so how do we get A to turn into one and B to turn into zero and all that good stuff, right? So here's step one. It says, obtain one as the first element of the first column using multiplication. So this is a row, and then these are columns. Think of like pillars or columns, right? And so in the first row and the first column would be this guy. This is the guy we wanna to change to a one. How do we do that? We use multiplication. I know very much that I could take A and multiply it by one over A, and then bam, it turns into a one, okay? So multiply by the reciprocal and it'll turn that first entry into one. Now, second step says, use the first row to transform the remaining entries in the first column to zero. So now I, now that this would be a one, you wanna use that, that row to change this guy into a um, zero. And how do you change something into a zero? You would have to add its opposite, right? So you would have to take 
one and multiply it by the opposite of what's down here and then a row one sorry I don't know why I wrote two and then you would add row two so that you could replace that row two like I said okay now the third step so now you've got a one and a zero okay and consequently these numbers will have changed in the process okay. so it says use the second row to transform oh no sorry step three obtain a one as the second entry in the second column so now we're talking about the second entry or second entry in the second column so now you're trying to get this guy to turn to a one and we already know it's not going to be the same number as it is here it's going to have been manipulated but regardless of what number it ends up being you can still multiply that number by its reciprocal and you'll get this one right here where it's supposed to be then regardless what's here because that's step four regardless of what ends up being there all you have to multiply is multiply the bottom row by the opposite of what's in that spot and then add that to row one and you'll get zero here so i know it it a lot of words that i'm saying but it will come um a better understanding of it will come as you start seeing me work out some examples so i have quite a few examples that i want to work out just because so we can see all the different things that can happen. Now you continue in that manner as far as possible, continuing row by row. So if you've got two lines here, or if you've got a third row or a fourth row, then you just have to keep going with that process. For this class, for the most part, we just have two rows. We don't have anything further than that. So here's the first example. Now in um, my math lab, you're not gonna be asked to do all of this with one matrix. But you might have like some problems that just ask you for A and B to write the augmented matrix and then to give them the size of the augmented matrix. Um, and then later you might have some problems that ask you to um, write the matrix as a system of equations. So they want you to go backwards. And then you might have some that ask you to do a specific row operation. And then finally, you'll get some problems that just tell you plainly solve the system. Okay. So it all just depends on what kind of problem you've got, but we're gonna do these at the beginning just so that you have examples. And then after that, we're just gonna be solving a bunch of systems. So you can see the different things that are happening there. So augmented matrix, remember I told you it's going to look like this, right? That's how the little box or bracket is how we identify that it's a matrix. And then this first column is going to be the coefficients of X. The second column is going to be the coefficients of y. This bar is like the equal sign. And then this row, this column over here is going to be your constants. So you're only supposed to have numbers inside a matrix, no variables anymore. Because depending on where the number is located, we know that that represents the coefficient of the exponent. So for the first equation is gonna be the first row. And then the second equation is going to be where I get the elements for the second row. So what is the coefficient of x? It is positive two. What is the coefficient of y? It is positive three. What is the constant on the other side? Seven. Now for the bottom. What is the coefficient for x? Three. What is the coefficient for y? Negative four. What is the coefficient for negative 32? Or I'm sorry, what is the constant? It is negative 32. And that's your augmented matrix. Now, in my math labs, it's not going to have these labels here. This is just me explaining to you how you're going to write those augmented matrix. Okay. In my math labs, it's just going to have a big thing like this. And it's going to have a little boxes. And they basically just want you to plug in the boxes. So you would put a two in this location, a three in that location, seven, three, negative four, negative 32. Now the size of a matrix, the size of a matrix is the number of rows by the number of columns. And so what you need to do is once you have your matrix, you're going to count it sounds funny, but you count down first and then across because these are the rows. And if I want to know how many rows there are, I have to count how many rows I've got right all the way down. 
So in this case, I've got two rows. So I'm counting two rows by, and then how many columns? That's when you count across. So I have one, two, three um, rows. So remember, for here you're counting down, and then for here you're counting across. So we've got two going down and one, two, three going across. And that's all they want is just the um, size of the matrix. Now, part C says write the matrix as a system of equations. So it's important that we know what these things represent again. Remember, these are the coefficients for x, these are the coefficients for y, these are the constants, this is the equal sign, this is equation one, and this is equation two. So when I go to write this in its um, system form, it's going to be 4x, a positive 6y, equal to 14. The bottom row will become positive 3x, negative 4y, equal to negative 32. And this is what they're looking for. Okay, so there are some problems that will ask you to do these things. Okay, and so you've got an example at least of how to do them for a particular matrix. Part D is also different. It says um, using the matrix from part A. So I'm going to be using this matrix here and I'm just gonna rewrite it so that I have it with fresh eyes down here. So this is the matrix from part A. And it says perform negative three times row one added to row two and fill in the blanks, okay? So they'll already have this and they're basically just gonna have blanks here. And so they're telling you which row needs to be replaced. Row two needs to be replaced. And that makes sense because remember what we mentioned, if you multiply something by the row, that's not the one that gets replaced. It's the one that doesn't have a multiple that gets replaced. So it makes sense that row two is the one that's going to have to get replaced here. Now let's see, how do we do that? Negative row one, plus row two. It's better to write it downward like this so that you can see what you end up with. Now, I'm using this matrix here from part A. Negative three times row one means to multiply negative three to each element. So I'm going to do two times negative three, which is negative six, three times negative three, which is negative nine, and seven times negative three, which is negative 21. Now row two is, I'm just adding it. So I'm just gonna put all the entries for row two right underneath that, okay? And then now I'm actually going to perform the operation and add this. So negative six plus three is negative three. Negative nine plus negative four is negative 13. Negative 21 plus negative 32 is negative 53. And so now I have all the numbers and the specific order in which they need to be typed over here in my answer boxes. And that's how you perform a row operation. Now we're gonna have a whole bunch more practice with this because the next thing to do is to just solve the system. And while you're solving that system, you're gonna have to do a bunch of um, row operations to turn this matrix into one that looks like the diagonal matrix, right? And then something, you'll end up with two numbers over there on that side, okay? Um, so I'm gonna do this example and then we'll stop the video because I have more, but these take quite a while to do, um, so I, Probably this section is going to have a multiple parts because these problems do just take long by nature. Okay, so step one is to turn this guy into a one. And we know that in order to turn something into a one, you just multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to write down what I'm going to do and then I'll do it. Okay, so for this particular problem, I want to do one half times row one and that will give me my new row one. And so I like to use little lowercase and uppercase letters to distinguish 
the old row and then the new row okay and that's just me you don't have to necessarily use my notation but that's the way I indicate it so that's the what I've got um, there so then now let's see what we have so if I take one half of two I get one one half of three unfortunately is a fraction three halves one half of seven is unfortunately going to be seven halves and then um, row two I didn't do anything to it so leave it there just as it was and be very careful because most likely your mistake isn't going to be um, your pro your operations it's going to be copying down things okay so make sure you copy down the negatives make sure if it says 14 you don't just put four right things like that so let's keep going so this was step one we got it done step two is to use that guy to turn this to a zero so remember how we turn things to a zero we need to add the opposite so in order to make this a zero I would have to add a negative three so I'm going to do negative three times row one to turn this guy into a negative three so that when I add it to that positive three, I will get zero. Now remember, this one has the multiple, this one does not, which means row two is the one that's going to be replaced. And here I definitely need to do some side operation before I go fill in the box. Now row two is the one being replaced, so row one is gonna stay exactly the same. So I'm just rewriting that one as it was. Now row two, we gotta perform this operation. So if I take this and I multiply each one of those by negative three, I'll end up with negative three, negative nine halves, negative 21 halves. And if you need to, use your calculator, right? Negative three times three halves, is negative nine halves. Negative three times 21, or I'm sorry, seven halves should be negative 21 halves. So you can use your calculator here for the arithmetic. Row two is going to be written just the way it is. Now this one's easy, I get the zero. But negative nine halves plus a negative Four. So remember you have to use this button for the negative. Gives me negative 17 halves. And then negative 21 over 2 plus negative 32. Gives me negative 85 over 2. Okay. So then now let's see what's the next step. That is I got to replace that. So 0 negative 17 over 2, negative 85 over 2. Sometimes you end up with fractions the whole way, and sometimes at the end, the fractions will undo themselves and you'll get back to whole numbers. Do not assume that all your answers are always going to be in integers or whole numbers, like 5, negative 5, 10, negative 10, things like that. Um, you very much well could have a um, fraction answer you just keep going okay whatever it is it is just make sure you do all your arithmetic steps correctly so now I need to got this one now I need to focus on getting that guy to a one so how do we do that we use the reciprocal right so I would have to take row two and multiply it by the reciprocal of what's there which is 2 over 17 but negative a reciprocal doesn't change the sign all it does is flip the fraction over. So the fraction itself is still a negative. And we need it to be a negative because a negative times a negative will give us that positive one. I'm not doing anything to row two, row one, I'm sorry. So I'm just rewriting row one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do this operation. So zero times this fraction is still zero. This number times its reciprocal is going to give me a positive one. And this fraction times this fraction, who knows, let's see. Negative two over 17 times negative 85 over two. And what did I tell you? Sometimes they come out nice, sometimes they don't. We get a nice whole number five. 
So now we've got to use this one, right? We've got to use that guy. That's done. We've got to use it to turn this guy into a zero. And then we're finished. We just have to write the answer. So how do I get this to be a zero? I have to add the opposite. So that means I'm going to need a negative three halves to add it. So negative three halves times row two plus what I've got there in row one and that should give me the zero. Now, so row one's gonna be the one that gets replaced, right? Because that's the one that doesn't have a multiple. But row two is gonna stay exactly the same. So I'm just gonna rewrite that one. Now, let's see if we do this operation. So zero times negative three halves is zero. One times negative three halves is negative three halves. And five times negative three halves is um, negative 15 over two. Then row one goes underneath that. So that gives me a one actually, zero plus one is one, negative three halves plus three halves is zero. And then let's see, negative 15 over two plus seven over two is negative four. That one came out nice as well. So that is my new row one. Okay. So then, now that we've got this side to look like the diagonal matrix, now it's just a matter of writing our answers, okay? And so there's two ways to write your answers. One is to write them as equations. Remember, this means one x, no y's, equals that constant. So one x equals this negative four. The bottom one says no x's, one y equal to five. So this may be what they want, they may have it already x equals and you got to fill in the box, y equals and you got to fill in the box, or they may say that they want the answer in point form. If they say they want it in point form, then remember your x value goes first and then your y value. So my answer would be negative 4 comma 5. So that is the point where those two um, equations would intersect on a graph, okay? And that's what the solution represents, is where those two points intersect, or where those two lines intersect on a graph. Now, this video, because I'm introducing everything and explaining everything, took 22 minutes just for the um, lesson and then for one example. So I'm gonna stop the video here, but I'm gonna continue with more videos for more examples.